tracked this month's hottest board games based on sales, popularity, crowdfunding traffic, and news. Wanna know which games are gaining ground and why? We're gonna list the top 10 trending titles that all have Momentum. Hey, I'm Chaz Marler with Watch It Played, and this month's chart of the most popular board games kicks off with one that I have been looking forward to since I backed its Kickstarter campaign back in 2019, True Van Legends from Come On Games. Now, steeped in Nordic myths and sagas, Trude von Legends features heroes who make their mark in a dynamic, ever-changing fantasy world. Because events during the game make changes to the board, causing the actions of previous games to affect future ones. However, this isn't being categorized as a legacy game in which the changes made to the game are permanent, because everything can be reset, allowing different sagas to start afresh. Trude Vong Legends underwent some serious delays during its production process, rumored to be due, in part, to a complete overhaul of its rules during its development. But now, it is finally shipping to its Kickstarter backers, including me! <laughs> well, at least part of it is, because the, the base game right here is fulfilling now, with all of the campaign's add-ons and stretch goals and other content coming in a separate wave in a few months. But even the arrival of just its core content is enough to propel this long-awaited game into the ranks of this month's most momentous titles. And that is just the first Kickstarter surprise in this month's countdown. Yeah. Before we continue on to that, let's thank the first sponsor that helped make this episode possible, the Parks Wildlife Expansion from Keymaster Games, an expansion that packs piles of prodigious park pieces for players far and wide. There's more parks, more trails, more gear, more canteens, and, of course, more wildlife, such as the wandering bison who travels around the park cards, offering bonuses when spotted. Oh, and what form did these bison bonuses take? Free rides around the park on its back? Words of wisdom from a world-weary mammal? Victory points? Well, I know the answer, and I'm not going to tell you. But I will divulge that there's a new national park introduced in the expansion, New River Gorge. Parks Wildlife pairs seamlessly with the original parks and the previous Nightfall expansion, and is available right now. So stampede your way to the link in this video's description to find out more and get the Parks Wildlife Expansion today! Oh, and the bison, his secret. He hands out snow cones to weary hikers. That's, that's what he does. The game Nightfall takes players to Thornmar Abbey, where an ancient order of holy knights watches over the abbey's sealed portal to the underworld. Meanwhile, in Fenton Abbey down the street, the Holy Knights simply invested in a very large padlock and called it a day. But now, Thornmar Abbey's unpadlocked portal seal has weakened, and demons have begun spilling from the rift, and now it's up to you to clean up the mess. Nightfall is an asymmetrical team game for one to six players. One team controls the knights, who must protect the elders and withstand the demons until dawn, while the other team controls said demons, who seek to break the seal to the underworld before morning. Nightfall is published by Red Raven Games, which itself is spearheaded by company founder and board game design renaissance man Ryan Lockett. Seriously. Is there anything Ryan can't do? And Red Raven Games usually does make a splash upon their release of their games, and this latest title, which started shipping around August 24th, appears to be no exception. Nightfall also features a campaign mode in which players read stories while exploring the map of a haunted valley, drawing their paths as they travel. This option for campaign continuity between games could increase Nightfall's longevity and cause it to reappear on our top 10 sometime in the future, which actually is the case with what happened with the next game in this month's list, which was previously discussed back in May of 2020. It's Sea of Legends, a narrative-driven, open-world tabletop game for one to four players who swashbuckle and swindle their way to victory as they raid ports, bury treasure, fall in love, and defeat their nemeses, which is all in a day's work for a scoundrel competing to become the most legendary pirate of the open sea. Now, Sea of Legends ran a previous successful Kickstarter campaign back in the spring of 2020, and now, the game is back on Kickstarter for another print run with a new edition that features revised and streamlined rules, updated faction objectives, and improvements to its campaign app, which fosters player interaction. This current Sea of Legends fundraising campaign runs through September 15th, and if history is any indicator, 
I am sure that we are going to see this newest edition of the game make waves again on our charts in 2024 when it washes ashore. And now, knocking at number seven, is Woodcraft, a dice-rolling manufacturing game in which one to four wily woodworkers compete to gather wood from the surrounding forests and then craft goods for their customers. Along the way, they'll hire helpers, improve their tools, and attain various types of timber in order to create the best workshop that they possibly can. No subpar woodworking here, you see. No quality stuff all the time if you want to win. Because the worthiest woodworkers will complete their projects by using dice that represent this wood that can be cut down to size, glued back together, and adjusted through different forms of dice manipulation. And then, whoever builds the best, most successful wood shop wins. <laughs> Woodcraft is tentatively scheduled for release in October, around the time of the Essen Game Fair. However, this date could slip due to the current challenges facing overseas shipping logistics. So, if you're looking forward to this game's arrival, well, then knock on some sort of organic building compound. Limestone. <laughs> oh, up next is the Red Hot, recently announced expansion for a game that's equally red hot right now, the Aquarius expansion for the zoo management game Arc Nova. The Aquarius expansion introduces multiple new elements to the game, such as sea animals, which must be played in new special enclosures that are connected next to water areas. And among these new sea animals, nearly half of them are reef dwellers, which introduce additional rules and wrinkles to the gameplay as well. Oh, but this expansion is not done yet, because another twist that it introduces are alternate versions of each game's five starting action cards. Players draft action cards at the start of the game, replacing two of their standard action cards with these new ones, making each game nearly as varied as the Animal Kingdom itself. Even so, keep that anticipation caged for the time being, because Arc Nova Aquarius is currently planned to be released sometime in 2023, which is going to give players plenty of time to breed their enthusiasm about this activity of animal assembly. You know what Alan Turing once said? I will tell you what Alan Turing once said. Alan Turing once said, codes are a puzzle. A game just like any other game. And now, in addition to being an accomplished mathematician, computer scientist, logician, crypto analyst, philosopher, and theoretical biologist, Alan Turing can now also be known as the inspiration for the game in our fifth spot this month, Turing Machine. I, on the other hand, just learned how to make pancakes. Turing Machine is a competitive deduction game in which competing code crackers attempt to be the first to deduce the collective secret code by asking questions of the game's physical decryption device comprised of an array of perforated computation cards. The game boasts over seven million different computational configurations to be able to solve, from simple solutions to mind-meltingly complex combinations, making the replayability essentially endless. Again, just mastered pancakes. The Turing Machine is currently scheduled to be released in November, so there is plenty of time to warm up our brains with some collegiate-level calculus before cracking the shrink on this game once it arrives. Arriving even sooner is the other game that helped make this episode possible, Firefly Misbehaven from Gale Force 9. In Firefly Misbehaven, players get to control different factions of the Firefly verse, from the criminal enterprises of Badger and Niska to the self righteous alliance, and even Serenity itself, as Maul attempts to find a crew to keep flying. In this deck-building card game, you and your interstellar adversaries begin with a unique deck of starting cards, as well as access to characters, items, and locations in the core, the border, and the rim. Then compete to control your very own corner of the verse, or play through different episodes with a wide variety of different objectives. Follow the link in this video's description. Yes. That's what you should do next. Follow that link in that description to pre-order Firefly Misbehaven today because it breaks Atmo and lands on store shelves on September 10th. All right, all right, all right, you convinced me. We're gonna move on now from games based on monumental moments in math to ones featuring famous foibles in philosophy with Cat in the Hat, no, Box. Box is where the cat is at. Cat in the Box based on Schrodinger's Cat 
thought experiment. Schrodinger's cat thought the, the, the Schrodinger's cat. That's what it's based on. It's a thought experiment. Woo! Yeah! Specifically, cat in the not hat but box bills itself as the quintessential quantum trick-taking card game for two to five cool cats where your card's color is not defined until you play it. Ha! <laughs> Take that, laws that govern the behavior of the natural world. We're not having it. Players hypothesize how many tricks they will win and place tokens on a community research board as they play their hand. In addition to the tricket, tricket? <laughs> I don't know what a tricket is. Perhaps the tricks? Connecting tokens on the research board scores even more points, which you can then put towards the years of brain reconstruction surgery that playing this game will inevitably require. <laughs> you think the game's a challenge? <laughs> Try talking about it online, apparently. Because if all of that stuff that I just tried to say wasn't enough, claiming the color of a card with the same number that has already been declared creates a paradox, further weakening the seals that are keeping the portal in Thornmore Abbey closed. Now, the deluxe edition of Cat in the Box featuring upgraded components, a recessed player board, and research boards are now available. Unless you add it to your cart, perhaps, then maybe it immediately sells out, making a little paradox of its own. I don't know. I have no idea how paradoxes work. Again, pancakes. What do you get for the unabashedly overproduced board game that has everything? Well, in the case of Foundations of Rome, the answer is simple. You run a Kickstarter to finance a second printing and a new expansion. On August 22nd, Foundations of Rome completed this latest Kickstarter after successfully raising nearly a million dollars towards its next print run. Included in this campaign was a new expansion titled Roads of Fortune and additional content including more miniatures, upgraded components, and more because if it's one thing that Foundations of Rome was in entire need of, it's some component upgrades. Woo, yeah, really, you dodged a bullet there, Foundations of Rome. Good, good thing you updated those components because woo, yeah, what would we have done? In the Roads of Fortune expansion, players seek to control the city's borders in order to unlock powerful new abilities. It also includes eight double-sided road boards, 10 plastic milestone markers, 19 alternate monument cards, 10 favor tokens, and more stuff. But what's even more amazing is in a feat that would surely make even Schrodinger himself green with envy, it is said that all this new content accompanying the Kickstarter will still fit inside the core game box along with the original content, which does sound impressive until you remember the fact that the core game itself comes in a one foot square cube box. This is very heavy. Still, this is an excellent game with a stunning table presence, and I cannot wait to add all the expansion's extra bits and baubles into the mix once it delivers next summer. In the meantime, though, time traveling tourists can traverse Renaissance Europe from Flanders to Venice in Tilatum. Travel to various cities to acquire trade contracts for wool and iron, and collect the required resources to fulfill contracts, invest in the construction of monumental cathedrals, gain favor of noble families, and participate in important fairs where big business deals are made. Talatum is a dice management game in which those dice have a dual function, gaining resources and performing actions. Plus, the power of the action is inversely proportional to the value of the die, so the, the fewer the resources that you gain, the more powerful the action is that you take, and vice versa. It's a really interesting twist on resource management, which I'm not only hoping to get a chance to try when the game ships this fall, but also that the mental gymnastics that these upcoming games are all going to cause don't give me a nosebleed first. And this month's biggest board game bounder is Twilight Inscription, the epic roll-and-write game coming in mid-September, which is set in the Twilight Imperium universe, where one to eight fierce factions fight for galactic supremacy. With a limited pool of resources at each faction's disposal, they'll need to carefully manage navigation, expansion, industry, and warfare as they amass victory points towards earning the throne on Mechatol Rex. Will your fledgling empire rule the stars or fade into obscurity? Answering that question is the game's press release that says, quote, anything can happen in this strategic, infinitely replayable game, and that is a substantial claim, Twilight Inscription. But, considering that I can now make flapjacks on demand, I tend to believe it. 
And, believe it or not, for over 20 more engaging games recently released and returning to store shelves, continue on now to our most recent Board Game Buyer's Guide episode or any of the other informative, entertaining tutorials on the channel. I have been Chaz Marler for Watch It Played, and uh, we'll see you over there.